Yesterday, a great revelation was announced to the world that Kraut and T is coming back. Apparently, somebody called DDJ is gonna make a live show with Kraut and where Kraut is gonna defend him and said that he didn't do nothing, he never doxed anyone and so forth. And uh, it's an interesting detail that DDJ, he was apparently also on Kraut's private Discord doxing server, whatever you call it. And But this video was posted by Miss Andre today, whoever he is. I suppose he's some friends with DDJ at least. Here Miss Andre today comments that um, at this point Kraut may be guilty of many things, but I haven't seen any evidence any credible direct evidence by itself that demonstrates he doxed anyone. Further, I haven't seen any evidence that this Discord server was created for the purpose of doxing. Well, I think Kraut himself um, admitted to doxing Coach Red Pill, and the argument isn't really whether the the Discord server was it wasn't created with the, um, precisely for the purpose of doxing. Yes, I do believe that the um, initial um, intention be behind creating the Discord server was to gather information with the academics to fight against those evil race realists and the doxing and the smearing stuff came afterwards so that's it doesn't really matter if the initial purpose of the server was to dox people but it was used to dox people and uh, also, I think um, Braving Ruin pointed out on his Twitter that they had like these different files on many so-called alt-right YouTubers who weren't even, ha didn't make any videos about race realism. So why would they be like gathering information about these people? Like perhaps not just to dox but to smear them to you know find some sort of ammunition against these nasty th thought criminal racists like this anonk meant as it says here is quite interesting like it, on one hand it pisses me off that the crowd doesn't have the decency to at least go back to his cave and you know stay there and never show his face in public or his well speak his voice in public but on the other hand it's probably gonna create a lot of hilarious lies and and just you know all sorts of shit show and stuff so it might be very entertaining and also i'm wondering if coach red pill is gonna sue him as he promised that you know if crowd uh, comes back to the internet coach red, red pill is gonna sue him and some speculation people have already engaged in on the internet is that uh, maybe Kraut is like Kraut might feel betrayed by Sargon of Akkad and maybe actually try to, you know, because Sargon basically threw Kraut under the bus. And here is a bus, so maybe the, this is like some sort of a subtle hint to Sargon or whatever so maybe there's gonna be like some battle between Sargon and Kraut and to be quite honest I cannot really say who I despise more so who I wanna go uh, get their asses kicked even more so I just you know I wanna see them go fight each other or like is Sargon gonna accept him to the liberalists he's gonna be their new emo waiter or something or maybe if they do, if Sargon and Kraut start to, you know, fight each other and stuff, maybe it can be like a redemption story for one of them. Like, you know, even this duplicitous Jew who has done all sorts of underhanded stuff, if he actually turns on his former master and, you know, is sort of like the show Dexter or something. I did, I've never watched it, but isn't like, you know, this psychopath who was, I don't know, maybe he was a killer in the past, but then he helps the police to catch other murderers or something. So maybe it's sort of like, you know, this horrible monster that tries to redeem himself in some way. 
or maybe Sargon actually will finally become red-pilled on the Jewish question and understand that why Kraut has done this thing is pe- partially because he is Jewish. I don't really expect any either of them to redeem themselves, but anyway, it's an interesting development, I would say. Like I, I sa- said in my, you know, one of my previous videos on Kraut that what we can learn about the Kraut scandal or something to that extent that you know it's very relevant that Kraut is Jewish why he has done the stuff he has done and especially now that he's coming back that's also very Jewish because there's the case of Mike Enoch um, I already mentioned like talked about him in more length in my last video so I don't want to spend too much time on it this is right after Mike Enoch was doxxed last year um, it was revealed that he is married to a Jew and, and all that So initially he tried to deny everything after he was revealed to be married to a Jewish woman. So he said that he was first associated with the right stuff, but when it became overtly pro-Nazi, I cut off ties when they went the direction they are going now, and that was four years ago. Honestly, I have not thought much about them. As you can see from all public writings, I'm a libertarian. My wife is Jewish. Do you really believe I am this person? Referring to Mike Enoch, the uh, internet personality of Mike Painovich. And now he even went to add, the TRS creator then asked Salon to help him deny that he was Enoch. If you give any fucks at all, then you could print that this is all bullshit. We are now being harassed not only by communists, but by actual neo-Nazis. So this guy has absolutely no spine. Like um, He should stand up to what he believes in, um, but he is behaving like a Jew. He is just saying whatever seems best at this particular moment in his life. And I guess at this point he felt like his career at the right stuff or the daily show was over. So he was, you know, just trying to claim that, no, I'm not this, you know, neo-Nazi leader at all. Which, of course, well, then he went back to the daily show and now he's even on Andy Worski. So basically this guy was defeated he was exposed but he's still doing this stuff and there are dumb goyim still giving him shekels and and beta bucks and so yeah there's just a few quotes from him so from mike enoch painovich there is an absolute purist stance which is like they jews are simply not allowed in which case i have to go so it implies that he is admitting he is Jewish and and even like this guy Sven Longshanks made this uh, at the end of December like uh, basically renouncing Mike Enoch and I guess Sven Longshanks he used to be affiliated with the right stuff I don't know great deal about him or the, all the people at the right stuff I listened to a few of their podcasts two three years ago but so here are some quotes from Mike Uh, I mean, Kaik Eunuch, in his own words, just look at this guy, like, I think, well, he looks soulless, I think he looks Jewish, and like, even, you know, seeing his face on this Andy Worski and um, Baked Alaska, like, I don't know, I just think there's something wrong, like, his face looks sort of, like, a, there's some plastic mask and under the skin or something, like, a, you know, Phantom of the Opera, who had his face mangled or something but then he put on the like there's the phantom of the opera mask underneath and then he put on new skin that's how it looks like to me (laughs) i don't know what's going on with this guy but in terms of who's going to be part of this movement if you are going to let in a mixed jewish person they really have to have done something to earn that and in and i think in my case i did like okay I could, uh, you could um, interpret this to mean that, you know, mixed Jewish person is his wife, but more like, you know, if you literally read it, it seems to imply that he himself is admitting he's a mixed Jewish person. Even amongst other Jews, I use the word Jew that way. I guess it means like to Jew somebody, you know, to backstab them, to cheat them or something like that. So at least even if he is not hinting that he himself is a Jew, but at least he seems to hang out with other Jews a lot and not just his Jew wife and yeah like okay then there's this stuff about him his opinions on 9-11 
the Jews did 9-11 conspiracy theory is retarded. Sorry, it's embarrassing. So yeah, just just ignore the five dancing Israelis and their ties to Mossad and how they knew about the attack in advance. Or like, uh, was it Ehud Barak, like the former prime minister of Israel? I think he was on 9-11 the exact day or maybe the next day he was talking about uh, suggesting how Osama bin Laden was um, in behind the attacks, even though it hadn't been like officially announced by the government that you know he is the main culprit. So yeah, just ignore, I ignore that Israeli element to 9/11. Sand niggers did 9/11, and this is why they must be removed among among other reasons. So yeah, this this guy he certainly looks like a Jew, he behaves like a Jew, so if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And then the last part is Laura Loomer. And, uh, you know, in this discussion on uh, Baked Alaska with Mr. Metagor and stuff, and Andy Raiswarski, um, she was... She admitted to doxing Mike Enoch's mother, even though it wasn't really relevant to anything, and she refused to uh, apologize or even say that she, what she did was wrong or immoral, like she, she could admit no fault of her own, like this was all bullshit, and thankfully, you know, even Andy Ray Swarski caught on to it, that she was just full of bull bullshit, she was full of pill pull, or she was pill pulling it's apparently a verb her behavior was the most obvious and like i don't think there are any like well maybe a few but really she doesn't have probably any you know great following of fans in any kind of alternative or alt-right movement or anything like that so and she's the most obvious like uh, just that uh, you know this jew who is jewing you for money and attention and whatever so yeah, all of all these three people, uh, Laura Loomer, Kraut and T, and Mike Enoch, they all have um, certain these, you know, pill pull, these deceptive ways of using language, how they uh, speak, they use similar stuff, and also they have the chutzpah to the audacity to pull this shit. Like, you know, even after they've been called out for the duplicitous shit they pull they still you know just come back later and pretend like they didn't do anything wrong this is a very jewish thing this i think you know other people they have some sense of shame and decency if they are caught uh, doing something completely stupid or underhanded or evil they usually they you know and they get exposed at least at that point they feel some remorse they understand that you know they should be ashamed but jews don't have that their, their minds work completely differently they and they don't i don't think they even understand absolute tr truth or like you know some things are absolutely right and wrong i think a anything is relativistic to them like they always no matter what they always try to get the you know higher ground they always try to win they don't care about, you know, if somebody, you you, th you get into a debate and you think you are correct, but then if you notice like, okay, that guy's arguments actually are better, like they never would admit it. They just try to come up with all sorts of pill pull sophistry arguments to make themselves look like they are better. And yeah, also back to Laura Loomer, she's even been like, you know, photographed, like sort of being hugged by Bill Clinton and just I don't know, look at this face, like, does it even look human? Like, okay, my mom said that you shouldn't judge people on their appearances, but come on, this, and... But yeah, it's basically to point out that she's not just some, you know, alternative journalist. She seems to be quite close to, you know, some of the elites in the world and, and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. But yeah, the Jews, like, especially like this three people i just talked about uh they remind me of like uh, you know vampires or like horror movie monsters who get killed or like murderers or whatever in horror movies like jason in friday the 13th and stuff 
Like, you know, at the end of each movie, they get killed, but then in the next movie, they are resurrected. Like, it's a common idea that, you know, the myth of vampires originates from Jews. And, well, there's, of course, some very libelous claims that Jews drink blood of children and stuff. I don't know if that's true, but certainly they are like vampires in the sense that after you defeat them, they just come back and they don't seem at all injured. They just pretend like you know they were never defeated and they are correct and you are wrong so yeah i think that uh jewish behavior has inspired a lot of horror movies and and simply like the european idea of what sort of like a supernatural monster i think it's somehow based in jewish behavior and yeah there's uh kraut laura loomer and mike eunuch they all exhibit chutzpah, which is the Yiddish word meaning insolence, cheek, or audacity. So basically, like, you know, they have the audacity to bull, pull or so, all sorts of bullshit. Like, even when they are proven wrong or, you know, they are defeated, then they just, they still have the audacity to pretend they didn't do anything wrong or, like, they were right and they're the victim or, or whatever, like, this is very Jewish. I'm not just saying this because I'm so fucking hateful of Jews. I'm just trying to I'm trying to educate people. Like th- there is a good reason why Jews have been kicked out of hundreds of different countries in Europe throughout the centuries because their behavior is very their sense of reality and morality is very different from the rest of us. And yeah, there's of course Pilpul and yeah, here it says that Pilpul is the Talmudic term used to describe a rhetorical process that the sages use to formulate their legal decisions. The verb is used as a verb. One engages in the process of Pilpul in order to formulate a legal point. So it originates from like some Talmud stuff. Well, Talmud is already bullshit and uh, like the most racist book out there anyways. Here it says, a pilpul is a catch-all term that in English is translated as, as casuistry. I didn't know what that word means, so here it says, casuistry, the use of clever but unsound reasoning, especially in relation to moral questions, sophistry. And it has like some synonyms like um, chicanery. So it's just, um, you know, being deceptive, being a uh, just bullshit artist. This is what Jews do. And these three people are um, great examples of both chutzpah and pilpul. I don't think these three people are like exceptions. They're not exceptions to the rule. So this is how Jews tend to behave. And that's why I think it's very important for people to understand it. That you cannot just, you know, try to understand them because, well, like, uh, you know, relate to them in a human way because... They're not human in that sense, like they don't have the same kind of reasoning processes as you or like their emotions are always very nepotistic and self-centered. They don't have the same sense of empathy and right and wrong as you and me. So this is why it's important to understand it. And uh, so it's not just a few individuals who are fucked up who happen to be Jewish. They, these people are doing pulling this bullshit because they are Jewish. They are simply behaving according to whatever it is that causes Jewishness. I'm, I'm still not sure whether it's more of a cultural thing for them or a racial thing or maybe a bit of both. Like, I, I don't know where it all comes from. Maybe it is actually from the serpent in the Garden of Eden who who fucking knows you know it is very relevant like i think i'm not a fan of islam certainly but i do think that islam still have they have their very fanatical and irrational religion but i think deep down they even them they have some you know understanding of right and wrong and and truth whereas for jews the truth is whatever it's more suitable for them at that cer- certain or particular moment.